What's up, my Vina loves? It's Miss Vina D coming to you all from Vina Team and News. When did I have Liam? I am an empath. That's so funny that you knew that. That's so weird. That um, the eyebrow pencil is NYX in black. Um, when did I have Liam? I had Liam when I was 23 and I was in a very abusive relationship. He was also a, um, I believe he was a covert narcissist. The more that I'm learning about narcissists, I'm starting to understand it a bit better and, you know, going to therapy for narcissism as well. Um, trying to, um, heal from that, from narcissism. There are, there are therapists that help you specifically from narcissistic abuse. So I've been doing that. Um, and, um, that was a very hard pregnancy, not because of Liam, but because of my relationship at that time. I remember one time, and this is something that I actually cover in my book, so spoiler alert. Um, one time his father, I was pregnant and his father told me the only way that you're going to leave me is if you kill me. And he threw a butcher knife at me, slid it across the floor and told me to pick it up and kill him because that was the only way I was going to get to leave. And it took years, it took years to get out of such an abusive relationship. Um, but after I did, I come to learn not necessarily my power because by that time I was only, what, 25. Um, but I had, I had come to enjoy being by myself. I got my own apartment. I got my first car by myself. I had my job. It was just me and Liam. I did not have Troy and Dylan with me at that time. Um, it was just me and Liam in an apartment in LA and I had a job and I took Liam to work with me because my job allowed me, my, my boss, he allowed me to take Liam to work with me every day, thank God. And Liam was what, I don't know, two. Um, and I took him to, to work with me every day. And uh, oh God, he, that, the boss at that job, he'll never understand how grateful I was for him. He'll never know, but yeah. Guys, narcissism is real, abuse is real. Um, and we all go through it. I don't care how pretty, I don't care how successful, I don't care how smart you are. Um, narcissism is real, the abuse is real. The abuse outside of narcissism, it's real. Um, especially if you're an empath, they definitely um, look for you, like me. So, someone said, what's been your favorite job so far? Any funny memories? Hmm. My favorite job? Acting. But besides, I don't really count that as a job because I love doing it so much. So, when I was working nine to fives, I'll say my first job ever was Sonic. I was actually a Sonic car hop for, I don't know, maybe two years. Um, no, I did not skate. I tried to skate, but Fallon was born with two left feet. So I did not skate. Um, and I could definitely tell you guys this story while I do my makeup before Jalen comes up here and curses me out. So um, I was a car hop at Sonic for about two years. I was 16 and pregnant with Troy while working there. And though it's not really funny, and I know it sounds pretty sad now, but I'm so glad that I did it, guys. Um, but, and I gave birth to my baby boys. Um, it was just, it's just crazy going back, looking at all of that now, you know, knowing everything that I know as an adult now and as a mother now. Um, I remember being on my feet for 12 hours a day and being seven months pregnant with Troy and going home to, at that time, I was living with um, my son's father and his mother and her husband and her, she had other children as well. And my life just being 
the complete and utter hell. I hated it. They didn't like me, of course. Now I get it. I didn't get it then, but I get it now. You know, I was 16 and pregnant with her firstborn's child. <laughs> he was 18, so, you know, they didn't like me very much. However, they let me stay there because I didn't really have anywhere else to go. Um, and they took me in and I worked every day for 12 hours. I was on my feet working and saving up my money so that when Troy was born, that we would be okay. Um, and it's just, you know, looking back at those, having those memories of how far you've come, you learn to appreciate where you are now and how far you've come in your life. And I never, um, forget to stop to thank the Lord um, with how far I've come. And then after that, um, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe not even a year later, I want to say, because Troy and Dylan are 19, um, 19, they're 14 months apart. Um, I ended up pregnant with Dylan and um, that was, that was a pretty tough pregnancy, but I got pregnant with Dylan and, you know, he, his dad took care of everything. Um, he was in a better position. He was older than me. I've always gotten with older men, which is why I got with a young one now, um, because I wanted to try something different and it was much better, um, for me in the position that I'm in now. So them being with older men and them telling you what to do and them trying to run your life and control you and make you be old with them. Yeah, I wasn't gonna go for that another time. So I got with someone younger and it's working so far and I'm loving it. Um, but yeah, then I got pregnant with Dylan. Once again, I've always been a working girl. I've never been the type to just sit at home and twiddle my thumbs and you know be a kept woman. I'm not that. You know, I could try to do that if that's what the man wants because I'm also very submissive. Um, but no, I, it's not gonna it's not gonna last very long um, with me because I'm a worker at the end of the day. I'm a creative, so I always want to make sure that I have my own bread and butter, and I'll be sure to teach my daughter the same thing as my mother taught me. Always have your own bank account, sweetheart, is what she would say. Um, so. I went back to Sonic. <laughs> now I know what a lot of you are thinking. Yeah, okay, so you had your own money by working at Sonic. But listen, it was good tips. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, when you go to Sonic, you are supposed to tip your car hop. I know a lot of people don't know that, but you do. You are supposed to tip your car hop. <laughs> For all of you who love Sonic, I still love Sonic. Um, but yeah, um, and I did what I had to do. And I liked it because it was mine and nobody could control what it was that I was doing. It was what I could do um, at that time. I didn't have a degree, high school diploma. I didn't have a high school diploma, I was a dropout. Um, and you know, I was a mother of two at 18 years old. You know, so um, I did what I had to do as a mother for my children and um, I'm not going to bore you all with the details of how hard it got, but it was hard. It was hard, which is exactly why I sit here and smile every day and enjoy the fruits of my labor, my labor now because um, I lived a life where it was supposed to break me, you know, and it didn't. And I'm grateful for God and how he showed me, how he chose to show me my lessons, my life lessons, because I get it now which is why I was so ready um, at 32. Was it 31 or 32? No, I was, by the time I found out, I was 31. At 31 to have another baby and really get to enjoy being a mom, you know, and giving her everything that I didn't know how to do that for the boys, which I'm making up for now. You know, thank God I'm capable of doing that for them, but yeah. Sorry, I'm rambling. I'll get to your questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was a mom of two at 17. No high school diploma. It was hard as fuck. 
It was hard as fuck for me too, girl. It was hard. It was hard. It was really hard. But, uh... And that's another thing that I'll be talking about in my book as well. Everything that I actually went through. Everybody always wants to know. Before Simon, what were you doing? You know, that's what everybody wants to know. And I, I really do deep dive into that in my book as well. And that will be releasing in July. So I'm really excited about that because this is my first time ever telling my story. Um, so I'm actually like really nervous about telling my story. But at the same time... I'm more liberated and I feel good about it because I feel like there's so many women out there who can relate to everything that it is that I've been through and more. Um, so it's not just lessons that I'll be sharing with you all that I've learned, but it'll also be lessons that I'll be hearing from you guys and the things that you went through and you know how it is that as women, how can we help each other? So um, that's why I'm mostly excited about my book because it really is, even though I tell you my drama, I tell you all the things that I have never told anybody, um, there's things that Jalen doesn't even know. Sorry, babe, and that's gonna be in this book. Um, but I really felt like as I, as I sit down and write it, I really do feel like this is my moment to get it all out and to really help those who you don't know who you're helping. Um, so I said, if you're going to tell it, fuck it, tell it all. And that's what I'm doing. And I, I hope that, um, my desire, my wish from releasing this book is that, um, us women with the baggage, as they say, um, <laughs> look at you, um, that they learn to embody their voice and not be afraid to share their stories. Um, we've been quiet long enough and I think that each day more and more women are learning um, to embody exactly who it is that they are as a person with no regrets. And it's been a struggle for me, it's been very hard for me, um, which is why sometimes you guys may see me in Somebody come for me and I'll get timid, even now, to this day. Like, I don't always know how to respond to things. Um, if I do an interview, I may, my answer may suck at times because when you're put on the spot and the lights are in front of you, you kind of, you know, you bitch up a little bit. And I do. And I'm like, fuck, I shouldn't have answered it like that because that's not what I meant. Or, you know, I start tripping over my words because I've been abused as a child and now it's carried on into adulthood and I don't know how to stand my own ground. and. It's all of these things that um, that has made you you and that you should be proud of. And that's what this book is really about. It's for us. Yes, guys, go ahead and pre-order now. It, it, my book is up for pre-order on Amazon. Um, it will be releasing in July, so go ahead. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Go ahead and get that little $9.99 price um, because after pre-orders are done, it will not be listed as that anymore. So go ahead and get your pre-orders now, guys, so that the day that it does drop, you will already have it. Now on Amazon, I do realize it says, oh, get your Kindle, get your Kindle, and it'll download on your Kindle. It does download on any device. It's not just Kindle, okay? so. Go ahead and um, pre-order on Amazon right now. Where are my other kids? They're here. I have them now. <laughs> That's another thing I cover in my book. I don't want to give too much away. But my children, all my boys and my daughter, they all live with me now. Troy's not here right now. Troy's with his dad for the summer. Good for you, ex-wife. Happy life. I'm so proud of you. Or you're gaining that courage to walk away. Because one thing about us women, what we love to do is hold down our men. You know, even if we're not so innocent within the relationship, one thing we do know is that regardless of whatever, good or bad, our vows are very serious. Even if you don't actually say them, even if you're not actually married by law, 
we say our own vows to ourselves. You know, we're very dedicated to our men when we dedicate ourselves in a relationship. And so having that courage to leave, especially if children are, are involved, it takes a lot of courage and it's very hard. And I don't feel like people, you know, commend us enough for it. Um, if anything, they ridicule us for, li for leaving and tell us to think about the kids. You know, what is it that they're going to go through if you leave this abusive relationship? But let me ask you something that's better. What is it that the children are going through while you're in this abusive relationship? What exactly is it that they're going to gain that's better while you stay in the abusive relationship rather than leaving the abusive relationship? I feel like, you know, um, if you can answer these questions for yourself, you'll find that answer. Meditate. That's another thing that helped me realize where it was that I was going in my life. I, I picked up meditation. Um, and that's just pretty much you silence everyone else's opinions, everyone else's voices, even your own. You silence everything. And you really become one with yourself. And um, when I started hearing my inner voice, and that inner voice, make no mistake, is always God. When I started hearing that inner voice, the answers came to me. And he was right. Nobody was going to understand. Nobody was going to like it. Everybody was going to ridicule me for it. And they were going to dislike me for it. But people would come around eventually once they started to understand. And that's pretty much what it is that um, I chose to do. That's what I chose to do. Whether people understood or not was of no consequence. I had to let that thought go. I had to let it go. I wanted people to be on my side so badly. I wanted people to understand what it was that I had gone through. And yada, yada, yada. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. You matter. You came in this world alone and you're going to leave it alone. So, you might as well go ahead and put yourself first and think about everybody else later. They'll come flocking. When they see everything come together, they'll come. But don't worry about all that right now. Right now you have to put yourself first. And think about what's best for you and those babies if you have any. And that's what I did. Do all your boys have different dads not being rude? They are. They are all from different fathers. Um, <laughs> it's, no, it's okay. I don't find it very rude at all. I'm very comfortable with my life and, you know, what my cards had out for me. My life lessons that I was supposed to learn but didn't and then had to repeat again in order for me to finally get it. Hey, listen, that's life. Life isn't perfect. Um, I'm not perfect. Um, God didn't make us perfect, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be, um, but what is perfect are those children and, um, their innocence is perfect and, um, that's all I could ever ask for. I don't look at anything else. I don't, I don't get involved in the politics of having my children or, you know, um, the religious views of behind having my children because there's also religious views based on if I aborted them as well which I chose not to I chose to have my children and um, I'm just glad that they're here oh here we go I didn't have to take it right here I'm just I'm just thankful that I had healthy babies and that they're smart they're beautiful kids inside and out um, and I don't know where I would be without them so um, God knew what I needed, and uh, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. You are so sweet. I will be doing audio, so I will be having an audio book as well. I'm really excited about that as well, because um, it's all a first time for me. Coming from someone who had nothing, like you guys, I'm psyched about this book. Like, even if it doesn't do well, I don't even care. Like, I just want to be able to say, and I'm going to be so happy to say, I did it. Like, I'm an author. I did it, you know? And you have to give yourself credit. You have to pat yourself on the back. Like, even if it doesn't go far, who cares? So what? 
you did that. You created that. Like, it's, it's the most amazing feeling I'll ever feel in the world. Especially coming from a relationship, or relationships, plural, sorry, um, where they were in control and I wasn't allowed to be creative. I wasn't allowed to have my own life or creativity, you know? I had to live by their rules or regulations or the, the perfect image for me is them and what they think and what they see. No. You know, I'm so excited that I did this. I created this. I made this. So, um, once again, this is something for us, for us creatives, for us who are scared shitless, you know, about creating something and, and, and going out on a limb for it and just doing it. So, I really do hope that you all support me. If you don't, no love lost. <laughs> No love lost, but I'm just really excited about it. I have a great relationship with my mom. My mom, me and my mom's, um, <laughs> you're here for the ramen noodle pajamas. Hey, hey. Me and my mom's relationship is always up and down because I'm a Taurus and she's a Cancer. But besides that, me and my mom are, are really close. I'm definitely doing a book tour. Yes. What time is it here? It's 11.33. <laughs> Where am I going? Everything here closes at 3 a.m. We also, in Atlanta, we have after hours, guys. So, I don't have my newborn baby. The kids will be here with my family members. So, Fallon is going to hit the town. I'm going to go dancing, okay? And I don't like to get to places too early because once Fallon starts dancing, she gets tired like a mama. So <laughs> I like to go late so I can finish early, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, y'all are getting ready with me while I do that. Cool? His baby daddy going, going where and which one? Are you talking about Jalen? Of course he's going. You talking about baby daddy number four? <laughs> Yep, he's going. He'll be there, turning up the dance floor. If y'all have never been out in Atlanta and you don't know, I will tell you now, whenever you go out and we're there, Jalen is always ripping up the dance floor. Not as much as he used to when we were just friends. And I think because now he has a whole family and he works a lot and now he's just fucking tired. <laughs> Welcome to fatherhood and being a husband, right? Um, but he still knows how to tear up the dance floor. He was just not too long ago. Oh my God. And listen, I was so nervous between me and you guys. Okay. I was so nervous because it was my first time meeting Usher and his lady. Right. And we were out, um, Jennifer and we were out and, um, they came, we had some friends with us and they came because we had mutual friends. So they were at our table at a club here in Atlanta. And they start, you know, playing Usher's music, of course, as they always do because he's gracing them with his appearance. Gotta love him. And Jalen gets up and he gets in the middle of the dance floor in our section and points Usher out onto the dance floor and battles Usher to a dance-off. And I look at him like, oh my God, like, is this okay? I love him, but I love Usher, but I'm like, listen, is he in the mood for a dance-off? Clearly he's here with his lady and um, JD was there. And I was like, maybe they're not in the mood for, you know, turning up and dancing right now, Jay, like they just walked in. And Usher got down, he hopped down off that couch so quick and was like, ah! <laughs> and literally dance battled with Jalen all night long. Oh my God. I wish I could have recorded it and show you guys the best time ever, the best time ever, ever. You, and in that very moment, I was like, God, Jalen, I just, 
I love your personality, bro. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I could have ever gotten a better partner. Like, your personality is to die for. You are fucking awesome. I was like, you weren't nervous or anything? He was like, no. He was like, it's not sure he dances. Come on, let's go. I dance. <laughs> oh, my God. But you don't dance like that. Oh, my gosh. Guys, perfect night. Perfect night. Just a sweetie. And Usher and his lady. I mean, they're just amazing. Amazing people, guys. Oh, yeah. Jalen makes me laugh for hours. I mean, even... And we were just friends. We were constantly, constantly laughing. I mean, it was endless. It was endless, the laughter. He was just... When the opportunity presented itself for us to be together, it just fit. Maybe unorthodox, but it fit. After all, like I said, you came into this world alone and you won't leave it alone. You might as well live your life exactly to the fullest and how it is that you want to live it, guys. Don't look for validation in anybody else. And even if you make a mistake along the way, that is your mistake to own. That is your mistake to learn from. And that's okay. You're a bad bitch anyway. Who said it? Who said it? And anybody who will ever speak ill on you, nine times out of ten, their life is not going the way they planned it. And they're upset because you're living in your truth and they don't like you for it because they don't know how to do that. And here my final loves. Thank you all for your love and support. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up. Also turn on notifications so when I do post you where they are posted and I will see you all in the comment section. Remember to always have the God bless attitude which is being positive at all times and seeing the good in every situation. Have a great day guys. God bless.